Hello and welcome to Veterinary Instrumentation's latest episode of Under the Skin, a videography series introducing key devices and techniques used during orthopaedic surgery. In this episode, we are looking at radial cut tibial plateau levelling osteotomy, or TPLO, using a locking plate for stabilisation of the stifle following cranial cruciate ligament rupture. This procedure alters the functional geometry of the stifle joint to restore stability during weight bearing. So, let's go under the skin. When the cranial cruciate ligament is ruptured, the stifle is unstable with abnormal cranial movement of the tibia relative to the femur during weight bearing. Restabilization of the stifle is achieved via creation of an osteotomy and rotation of the tibial plateau to reduce the tibial plateau angle to 5 degrees. Reduction of the tibial plateau angle prevents the abnormal cranial movement of the tibia relative to the femur that occurs as a result of cranial cruciate ligament disease or injury. Very accurate preoperative planning is essential both to ensure correct positioning of the osteotomy and to determine the degree of rotation required. The patient is positioned in dorsal recumbency and the stifle joint is approached via a medial incision. A mini medial arthrotomy or arthroscopy should be performed in order to inspect the joint space. Particular attention must be paid to inspection of the menisci and in particular the medial meniscus. It is important to understand the intra-articular anatomy. Damaged areas of meniscus and remnants of the cruciate ligament should be debrided. The joint capsule is left open once the arthrotomy is complete. The soft tissues are elevated to expose and access the proximal medial tibia. More experienced surgeons may choose to keep the patient in dorsal recumbency, but lateral recumbency with the affected limb downward is recommended for beginners. The tibia must be parallel to the table. A short hypodermic needle is inserted into the stifle joint, just cranial to the medial collateral ligament. This needle acts as the centre of the TPLO osteotomy. A specialised curved TPLO blade is selected of the appropriate size as determined by the preoperative planning. The blade position is checked against the tibial and landmark measurements as per the preoperative plan. The osteotomy position is lightly marked onto the bone using either a bone scribe or diathermy and positioning is double checked against preoperative landmark measurements. Holding the TPLO saw perpendicular to the tibia, the osteotomy is started by hovering the saw at full power over the bone and then gently bringing it down to make contact. Once a partial or half-depth osteotomy is created, the rotation distance is marked on the tibia. Using a small osteotome and mallet, create two marks that are separated by the same distance as the rotation measurement that was calculated during preoperative planning. Once the rotation marks are made, the osteotomy is completed to full thickness. An Ellis pin is placed in the cranial proximal tibial plateau, just under the cut surface of the joint capsule. The pin should be angled about 30 to 40 degrees to the horizontal and aimed towards the caudal tibial cortex. The Ellis pin is used as a handle to rotate the tibial plateau along the arc of the osteotomy, taking care not to create any internal or external rotation of the tibial plateau during rotation. When the rotation marks line up, the tibial plateau has been rotated the correct amount. A K-wire is placed to stabilise the rotated tibial plateau. The K-wire is inserted into the tibial tuberosity just proximal to the most distal insertion point of the patella ligament. It is driven cranial to caudal, with the tip just exiting the bone of the caudal tibial cortex. The osteotomy is then compressed cranial to caudal using a large pair of bone-holding forceps. 
These are placed cranially on the tibial tuberosity and caudally in the caudal tibial plateau. There should be no gap at the osteotomy. A number 11 blade can be used to check that there is no gap. Plate position and fit is now checked. The plate should fit flat distally on the tibial diaphysis, but there may be a gap between the plate head and the tibial plateau. The head should sit centrally over the tibial plateau segment. Temporary fixation of the plate to the bone can be achieved by placing a K-wire through a locking drill guide. The plate is now placed. The order of screw placement in this type of locking TPLO plate is very important. The first screw is placed in the proximal hole of the straight section of the plate over the tibial diaphysis. This is a non-locking screw and is placed in the neutral position. The head of the plate is then secured to the tibial plateau using locking screws. A locking screw drill guide must be used to ensure that the pilot holes are drilled at the correct angle relative to the plate. This is important to ensure correct and secure engagement of the plate screw locking mechanism. The most distal screw in the plate is then placed. A cortical screw in axial compression mode is used here. Finally, the remaining screw is placed in the straight section of the plate. This plate hole can accept either a locking or a cortical screw. It is recommended that a locking screw is placed here for maximum construct security. Following plate placement, limb alignment, range of joint motion and patella tracking must all be checked prior to closure of the joint capsule and routine surgical closure. Cranial tibial thrust should be negative, but cranial draw will still be positive. For further information on the VI range of instruments and implants for TPLO surgery and to view a comprehensive surgery guide on this procedure, please visit our website or contact our specialist technical support team. Join our online community by following our social media pages, keeping up to date with the latest releases of training and education material, as well as company updates.